Hey, have you ever stopped to look up and read the plaque over the main doors into Osler Hall? For many years, this carved stone tablet has been covered with ivy, so perhaps it wasn't even possible for you. But if you have read it, you will know that it gives a brief summary of the history of the school up to the point at which it was unveiled. It reads, the school was founded at Weston, 1st of May, 1865, by the Reverend William Arthur Johnson and moved to Port Hope in 1868. The buildings were burned in 1895 and rebuilt. Fire destroyed them a second time in 1928. While rebuilding, the senior school moved to Woodstock. The school returned to these new buildings 30th of April, 1930. Thus, this spring marks the 90th anniversary of the opening of what I sometimes call the third school. On May 1st, the school's 65th birthday, the new temporary chapel in what is now the Davies Center was used for the first time. It turned out not to be so temporary. The Memorial Chapel would not open until 1951. Then the official opening took place two weeks later. I read from the July edition of the 1930 TCS record. Fire may destroy the physical parts of a school, but it cannot burn up the old spirit. This was demonstrated on May 16th at the opening of the splendid new buildings. These were opened by the Governor General Lord Willingdon accompanied by Lady Willingdon, in circumstances that showed that the old school had lost not one whit of the spirit and tradition that dated back for 65 years. Hundreds of old boys and friends of the school attended the vice-regal opening of the new edifice. They came from Toronto and Hamilton by train and motor car. There was a special train from Montreal bearing old boys and patrons of the school for the event. It was around the memories of the institution that the ceremonies chiefly centered. It was an old school. It was carrying on the traditions of that school in fire's despite. It was representative of the ideals in a distant part of the empire of those splendid public schools of England. The ceremonies of opening the new buildings was impressive. The cadet corps was drawn up as a guard of honor for their excellency's approach to the main entrance. Beside the cadet company, there was the junior school lining the roadways. At the approach of the viceregal party, a royal salute was given to the distinguished visitors, after which Lord Willingdon inspected the cadet corps. A bouquet of flowers was presented to Lady Willingdon on behalf of the school by Mrs. Orchard. Then the Governor General was presented with the key to the school. His Excellency, on opening the building, congratulated the headmaster and everyone else concerned on returning to their old home site again. Conducted by the headmaster, their excellencies then traversed the new buildings and did not stint their praise of what they saw. The guests of the school were then entertained to luncheon in the new dining hall. In an address after the display in the gymnasium, his excellency congratulated the headmaster and those responsible for the new school on returning to their former home site undeterred by the disaster of the fire two years ago. His excellency confessed to his interest in educational institutions in Canada. His Excellency desired to impress on the scholars the enormous importance of making the most and best of their school years, which would influence them through all their, their lives. In the school, he declared they were making lifelong friendships. They met failures or successes in the classrooms or playing fields. He hoped that those who were successful would be reasonably modest, and Lord Willingdon had a word of cheer for failures too. When I was a lad at school, said he, I had reasonable success in the playing fields, but very little at work. But look at me now. I'm the Governor General of Canada. Then he added some really serious advice. So my young friends, said he, who are perturbed at failing, remember, you may grow up to be the Viceroy of India or something like that. I hope you are learning to become Christian gentlemen. I would stress the importance of good manners to everyone. Your responsibilities are great indeed. You are growing up to be the citizens of a country which is destined to be one of the greatest and most influential in the world. By these references and by some really democratic sallies of wit, the Governor General won the hearts of the boys and inspired really genuine outbursts of applause and not because of His Excellency announced that there was going to be a half day in honor of his visit. Happy birthday, Trinity College School.